I'd like to wish you all a happy new year and welcome to this week's report. Today is uh, Thursday, January 4th. And as you can tell by the way I'm dressed, a little bit cooler here today than it's been lately. And um, well, I'm happy that I'm not sweating profusely during my uh, in my garage studio here. It is kind of cool. So if you're uh, if you're heading out, you definitely uh, might want to bring some warmer clothing with you this weekend. Um, so speaking of this weekend, you know we've got good weather Friday and Saturday in most areas, basically all areas. Sunday right now looks pretty horrible everywhere as well. Um, Last week, I don't know if you guys tuned in, but I talked about the forecast looked really bad for the weekend. Well, they, you know, that long-range forecast was a bit off, and it uh, looks like the only really windy day is going to be Sunday. And uh, so we got good weather Friday, good weather Saturday, Sunday is horrible, and then the rest of next week looks pretty good again. So uh, this time of year, I'm not too worried about a day of heavy wind. It's not really going to mess things up any more than they're already messed up by the fact that it's January. So... Shouldn't really have any major impact on uh, on the fishing, other than you know causing some wind swell and stuff like that on probably on Sunday and Monday. Um, you know, not a ton of coverage now that rockfish is closed, but uh, something that's interesting is uh, up north at the uh, Channel Islands, the Aloha Spirit is going to be running uh, halibut or bus trips on Sundays. I doubt they'll make it out this Sunday, but they're going to have those online here where they're. Targeting beaches and squid beds and stuff for uh, for halibut, and you know, as we get into the next lunar cycle, you might start seeing sea bass, or yellowtail, or things like that as well. So, if you're a sportful guy looking to do something other than fish a leadhead and squid for sand bass, that might be uh, something worth checking out. Um, so, you know, uh, regarding other fisheries, uh, a bunch of my buddies always go to uh, San Clemente Island on New Year's Day, and this New Year's Day wasn't any exception. A uh, couple boats, or I think. Two or three boats went over and uh, had really good calico bass fishing. I know that uh, Ron Matro and his son were over there fishing with uh, with Benny Florentino. I know Matt Florentino and the guys from Kicker Jigs were over there as well. Oh, by the way, happy birthday, belated birthday, Benny. Guy's been uh, fishing Clemente for as long as a lot of you guys have been alive and then some. But uh, yeah, it looks like they had their good standard winter fishing. They had fish on... Uh, on lead-headed swim baits, they also had them on hard baits and weedless swim baits. So, um, yeah, you know, Saturday might be a good option to go to Clemente. I don't really have any fur plans for the day yet, but uh, that's simply on the back of my mind. Uh, kind of a long trip with my knee just replaced, but uh, got to do it sooner or later, and the weather looks fine for it. But, um, yeah, so, you know, along the beach... Uh, bass are biting as well. I did the sport boats out of Del Rey, the, the Spitfire, the New Del Mar. Uh, they're having a really good sand bass and calico bass fishing up in the San Juan Bay there. I saw a video today from uh, Danny Erickson on New Del Mar. It looked uh, very windy. It was an offshore wind, so once that dies down, it'll be nice. Uh, boats out of Long Beach are doing the same thing. Also out of Dana Point. Like I mentioned last week, the sport boats out of Dana and the Native Sun are going to start doing their halibut derby again. Uh, so that's interesting to see. Um, I fished on Friday. I got a real late start. I, I don't think we even got out of the harbor till 12.30. I think we left the house at 11.30. Probably launched around noon. And um, we're, we were going to fish the harbor with me and Chris Oaks and Matt. And um, we stopped and fished one of the oil islands. It didn't look good. A lot of red tide in the harbor. It was good water movement with that big swell happening. But, uh, you know, we didn't... Middle of the day, it just did not look uh, look bitey. So we decided to run out to the wall, and we're going to check out the inside of the wall. And um, concerned that big swell might have the outside washed out. But uh, as we approached, we decided to take a peek outside, and uh, and the results pretty much spoke for themselves. You guys got a swim a ladder? Yeah. Swim ladder? We're good. You mean a poop step? <laughs> yeah, I think I quit crab in the water. There's a lot. Bite? Oh, Bite. Busted me off, I think. Nope. Bite. Axe bite. Oh, look, uh oh. We oh, got a big one. Grande. Light deal. Nice, another sand bass.
pollute expert. Ooh, in there. Where the biggins are. Yeah. Or not. Is this where Lilith caught that 19 pound sand bass? Yeah, limited. That fish looks huge. Right? He's four foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, you need to a fluke, man. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm okay. Sorry, I just wanted to catch some fish. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. I need this fish to feed my family. Yeah. Right. Hey, that one. Yeah, so that uh, the, all those fish Chris was catching was on a little zoom fluke on a ball head, and he's using, I think, 12 or 14 pound sunlight fluorocarbon. I think he uses 100% fluorocarbon line as opposed to Spectre to fluorocarbon. And uh, when we first got out there, he was absolutely roping them. You got to see it was basically every cast on that little fluke. And um, it, once we kind of got the bite dialed in a little bit better, we switched to the uh, 5 inch MC uh, Viejo series swim bait on a on a light, um, we're using both the uh, the Viking heads and also the uh, Berkeley Frenzy. I think quarter ounce. I don't think it's Frenzy Fusion. I'm not. I can't remember. I apologize to Berkeley, but uh, the uh, <clears throat> I have some right here if I can find one. Yeah, everything's too buried. Sorry about that. But it's the. Uh, I'll put it up on on the thing there. But those two lead heads were getting bit really well, and um, I don't know, in, in two hours we, we had, I'm going to say, well over 60 fish for the three of us, and uh, left them biting. You know, it's just Chris had to get home, and uh, when you catch that many, you, you kind of get worn out from it anyway. But uh, real fun day, you know, and it was interesting. A uh, ton of loose kelp that got ripped out of the walls. There's not really much kelp connected anymore, but there's a lot of it piled up on the wall, so we kind of had to work around that, and I got to video talking about how I did that here. All right, so you can kind of see in this video here what I was talking about with the uh, keeping the boat in position against the wall. You know, we had quite a bit of swell here coming in at an angle. It's kind of pushing you in towards the wall. So what I did was I ran with the wind at my back up towards the uh, west there. And basically all I had to do was keep the motor hard over towards seaward and kick the boat in and out of gear to uh, keep these guys moving along. Even if we had a troller, it wouldn't have worked with all this uh, loose kelp in the water, stuff like that. You know, you're just running the risk of fouling that uh, that troller up and being in real trouble by trying to do that. And one of the things to keep in mind when there's this much kelp is to uh, keep an eye on uh, your prop to make sure it's not getting fouled up. Your, make sure your motor's peeing so that you don't, uh, you don't uh, overheat in a bad spot here. But, uh, you know, it, I still caught plenty of fish doing it, but they uh, made it a lot easier for the guys to fish. Through the magic of television, I was able to find those lead heads while I was showing you the other video. They're the Berkeley Fusion, and we're using the uh, quarter ounce model. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, we uh, had really good fishing, but then um, eventually the conditions changed. They made it pretty hard to keep the boat in position at the wall. And I've got a little video here explaining kind of what we we're looking at and how we corrected that to uh, go back to having productive fishing. Another uh, scenario you encounter here a lot when you're fishing a wall, you know, I kind of talked a little bit earlier about keeping the boat positioned properly, is that uh, eventually that proper position or angle is likely to change. Um, we've been catching fish pretty steadily this whole way up the wall here, but um, as that south wind stopped blowing, it became harder and harder for me to keep the boat in position because 
when it shifted a little bit to the west and now it's wanting to blow my bow out to sea so now i'm actually instead of steering away from the wall i'm having to push the boat back in there to keep these guys on it and um in that situation while they're still catching fish here uh it's becoming a lot harder to keep the boat correct and the uh the smartest thing to do in this situation is to after chris catches that garibaldi there um spin the boat around and um run uphill a little bit and then fish back down through the zone where they're biting but going the other direction and um it's a much easier direction to fish in again you've got the wind behind you which is the way to go you can kind of keep that bow out to keep yourself off the rocks and uh the fish should still be biting, you know, once you get back into that area that they were biting. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, Matt's going to catch one here in a second. But, uh, the, uh, how Chris gets one. No. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, there we go. So right back where we left them. And uh, Matt's crane operating again here. But, uh, yeah, just a tip. If the wind's not at your back, you need to swing your boat around. Yeah, so if I end up not going to Clementi or Cat or something like that, I might just go fish the wall again or uh, some different stuff like that. I'm, I'm actually excited from this big swell we had that stuck around for so long because uh, I'm hoping it wiped out all the kelp at Palos Verdes again. Because uh, last spring that crankbait fishing in there was just pretty pretty special thing to be a part of. So hopefully uh, we'll see some of that again. I don't know. Guess uh, have to wait and go up there once the weather settles back down. Um, not a lot of coastal stuff to cover other than that. Uh, there's some game fish happening down in San Diego. I think it was yesterday. The, uh, the new Seaforth half day boat had a, uh, or it might have been dolphin. One of them had a big yellow, uh, while they were fishing local there. Um, there's also some big bonita around. I'm, you know, six to ten pounders. Some of them looked a little bit bigger than that in the pictures I saw. But these guys are trolling around for them, finding them. Uh, they bit down in San Diego for a few days, and they flashed up in uh, Dana Point the other couple couple days in a row. And uh, I don't think anybody's been out looking with all the weather we've had, but uh, they're still around. We may relocate those. And those fish uh, will be around on the local banks normally, at least if the last few years hold true. I mean, the first tuna I caught last year, the year before, it was the year before, it was in like April, and uh, there was a big school of Benita out there where the bluefin were as well. So that's, uh, that bodes well for the future. Something else that bodes well is the, uh, the bluefin are still around. They're down, uh, the long range boats are getting them down around 170 miles from the dock. That's that stuff outside of uh, San Martin Island. It seems like that's where those things hang out uh, pretty consistently in the, you know, in the colder water months. But um, you know, long range boats are running trips pretty regularly and they're hitting those coming and going. So. Uh, Real nice grade of fish too. They're getting them over 200 pounds. Some, you know, not a lot of the real smaller school size ones. But those bigger fish seem to be uh, seem to be holding steady. And um, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to uh, Anthony Shea about this while I was at his house uh, interviewing about swordfish, and he said he talked to somebody, a uh, scientist, um, up at uh, some college up up north of California here somewhere, but. Uh, I probably should have paid better attention to that part, but uh, they were saying the bigger bluefin don't really move as much as the smaller ones do. You know, the, you hear these things swimming back and forth across the Pacific from here to Japan twice in a year and stuff, but they say once those bigger fish get into an area they're comfortable in, they tend to hang out there and they don't move as much. So I think that's why we see those bigger fish during the winter. I don't know, just a theory, but um, hopefully they slide back up here and some of those smaller fish come from the west and uh, fill the rest of that stuff out for us would be great. Um, in the meantime, you know, long range boats are getting them. We'll see once boats start getting out the uh, call on that, looking out in that area, you know, it's, uh, they might find them in that zone too. It's, you know, what, about 50 miles closer to San Diego, 60 miles closer to San Diego. So, um, you never know. I don't see why they wouldn't slab as well. I really haven't looked at the, uh, SST charts down that way. It's kind of early in the season for me to even care about it. But uh, yeah, you know, boats well for the year. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys all had a great Christmas and New Year's and uh, hope you guys get out and catch some fish this weekend.